So if you haven't heard of the egg drop challenge, it's a competition that requires you to make a contraption to protect an egg from breaking when dropped from a height, as demonstrated here behind me by Mark Rober. And at the heart of the egg drop challenge is STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths. And it's this what makes it an excellent activity to introduce students to engineering concepts in fun and engaging ways. And if you want to go extreme, why not drop your egg from the drone? Assuming you've got a drone, now all you'll need is a drop release. So your choice of drop release is going to be heavily influenced by the type of drone that you're flying. Uh, simply in terms of mounting options and whether or not your transmitter has any spare channels to control the uh, drop release. So in my case I'm flying a ghost drone made by Ehang and there is no separate transmitter. It's controlled via an app on the phone. Uh, so for that reason I originally opted for this uh, top race uh, drop release mechanism. Uh, really simple to operate. Simply switch on the drop release, switch on the remote and press once, servo opens, press again, closes. So really simple plug and play system. However, there are some issues um, and the main one being range. So it is rated at 180 feet, uh, which even at that sort of range I did find operation to be fairly inconsistent uh, so if you're happy at flying sort of below say between 100 and 150 feet I'd say you wouldn't have any issues but above that um, just be aware that operation may not always uh, work as you intend it to the other issue I found um, the other bugbear are these batteries that they use in the remotes. These three button batteries. Now they're not the most convenient to get hold of. Um, so if you do go for this unit, make sure you carry a spare set of these with you. Because you don't want to be caught short when you're flying. And obviously as these deteriorate, uh, your range will also deteriorate. Um, so... I did a bit more research and I found an alternative drop release system made by a company called eFlight and I'll talk you through that now. Let's take a look at this eFlight. So to begin with the installation process for this eFlight is definitely more complicated however the upside is sky really is the limit when it comes to how high you can fly and still be able to release your payloads. Now the complexity comes because the drop release needs to be connected to a spare channel on a receiver. Now if you've got access to the built-in receiver in your drone and it has a spare channel, you're in luck because uh, you simply use that spare channel to operate the drop release. But in my case, if you don't, you will need to purchase a separate receiver and transmitter. Now I got these this kit from Hobby King. I will link in the description below. Uh, now, before I show you the, the full installation process, uh, another thing to be mindful of, if your drone has a gimbal, uh, just make sure you leave enough clearance uh, so it doesn't obstruct your gimbal. Um, now let me show you the full installation process for this e-flight. So the payload release that I'm using for this project is made by a company called e-flight. And I've attached it to the drone using a piece of fiberglass board like this. Uh, you can also use um, printed circuit board for this type of job. You just want to ensure that whatever you use is strong and lightweight. Now, let me show you how I attach the mechanism. So you can see I've got two longer bolts at the front and two shorter ones at the base. And this just enables me to create 
uh, roughly sort of 45 degree angle and this ensures that when you do release your load it does fall to earth and doesn't get stuck and then I've just used cable ties to secure um, the mechanism onto the five glass board now the board itself is attached to the drone conveniently using the gimbal mounting point if I let me release that and I can show you so I've, I've removed one of the screws already so there are a couple of um, screw points here that attaches the gimbal onto the drone and I've just sandwiched the fiberglass board onto that and that works a treat uh, the added bonus is that um, these mounting points are central to this to the drone so it helps uh, a lot when it comes to uh, stability particularly when you're carrying a payload so next I'll show you how I um, attach the battery and the receiver the battery that I'm using is made by Ternagy it's 7.4 volts 180 milliamps small and lightweight and I've attached it to the top of the fiberglass board using a couple of bits of velcro so that fits in there nice and snugly now that battery lead will eventually find its way to the receiver which I've attached to one of the arms of the drone using a um, cable tie so only two plugs connected to this receiver the battery is the top one and the uh, drop release is the bottom one so if I were to connect the battery up now so you can see the drop release is now live and I've connected it to channel 5 on the remote so if I were to flick that you can see it operates the drop release a quick drop test indoors before we test for the real thing rather than wasting real eggs for your test drops Use a balloon partially filled with water to simulate your payloads. I took her up to about 50 meters before releasing the balloon. And if you're happy with your test drops, you're now ready for the extreme drop challenge. So the students were challenged to build their contraptions using everyday household items such as straw, balloons, tape, string etc. And as you can see they came up with some really ingenious ideas uh, from parachutes to protective capsules. I would then take their contraptions up to about a height of 30 meters and if their eggs survive this they then progress to round two uh, where I would then increase the height to about 40 and eventually uh, there would be one winner but as you can see their contraptions were uh, really effective and uh, a lot of their eggs did go all the way to the 50 meter mark. The parachute contraption was clearly the most favoured by the students and if I were to carry out this activity again I'd probably um, award extra points for accuracy of the drop just to encourage um, other types of builds. Hopefully this has inspired you to carry out your own extreme drop challenge. Always happy to answer any questions. 
Have fun. <laughs>